Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by Bunny Carpenter, who is here on behalf of GRF. Well, Bunny, welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing great today. Great. Well, thank you. So I know there was a meeting just the other day, and uh, I know you would like to share some interesting information with us. Now, to start off, it looks as though the PAC is a really hot topic. Yes, it is. I think you uh, were able to read in the Globe and the Register. Uh, Judith had uh, put in an article or helped help the reporter to put in an article so that people would understand what really happened. So there was a nice article in both the Register and the Globe and recently letting the residents know GRF has every intention to provide the necessary maintenance the PAC needs. So um, uh, for those who thought we were going to completely stop it, no, this is not the story. <laughs> so staff has been directed to go out for bid for the HVAC. And this time we are asking the vendor to provide and options for the best bang for their buck. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going for the high end, you know, uh, we, we basically want a system that actually fits our needs and uh, provides what we need to have it provide. So anyway, we want a quality product and I want everybody to understand that, uh, that actually meets our needs. Okay. And I, and I understand that uh, some items will be turned over to the MNC committee, but you still will have a PAC committee, right? Yes, and um, chair is now John Crowstone, mm -hmm. and the first uh, item basically on that that'll stay on that committee is is the HVAC, okay, and uh, we're asking them to give us uh, options that we can choose from. So um, as we speak, my understanding is that uh, staff is now getting bids on the HVAC. Mm -hmm. So. Um, just to understand basically what really happened um, when going out to bid this year, the PAC committee did not change any of the items. Uh, the first time uh, the bid, there was only one supplier that actually uh, responded. And so staff went out to bid again and the bids came in 1 million plus, wow. then budgeted, okay? 5.5 million, and that was not the end of it because based upon experience, you know, uh, the project requires uh, construction managers, and we know, and we know from the other um, clubhouses that we built that you never know what you're going to get into when you start uh, doing the construction. So, it, you know, most of people just estimated that 5.5 was not the end of it. It was going to end up being six plus, you know. So um, it, it was really a dilemma as to what to do, and it really divided the board. Yeah, I, I had heard a few things over the last several months, you know, as to kind of what's been happening. So um, at this point, w what's kind of happening? I mean, is, is, is COVID-19 preventing things from happening? Actually, COVID-19 is not preventing anything from happening. Um, we can still go out to bid. We can get the bids. And um, from my understanding, okay, at this moment, that we still can um, install the equipment that is needed before, um, by, by the end of this year. And now we're estimating that maybe the pack won't even be able to open up you know, based on the COVID-19, mm -hmm. um, maybe till sometime next year. So the goal would be to put the safety items installed before we open up the pack and not to delay it, you know, as which would be the ordinary opening. Right, right. Now, I understand that because of the pandemic, uh, the GF, GRF was hit a little hard in, in regards to revenue loss. Oh my gosh, we had no idea because if you can imagine you know, we lost our trust fund, not a, not all of it, but you know, it, the trust fund money, we get $5,000 for every um, manor that's being sold. 
So uh -huh. that is way down. Now, so you can imagine our community, especially GRF, is very dependent on the revenues, the revenues that you get from golf, the revenues you get from bridge, you know, and all of these others. We get also um, helps us with the expenses when we have performances at the, at the uh, PAC. So we had no idea and uh, we're still, uh, we, have a, we have a better idea now, but we're still don't know how things are going to happen until the end of the year. So that was one of the things that really, um, uh, you know, hit GRF hard because then they were saying, uh, you know, are we going to be fiscally responsible to the community if we, if we accept this bid at the pack at 5.5? Mm. So believe it or not, you know, there were a lot of people that were very angry about it, but uh, I received personal cards that were sent to me saying thank you. So, um, like I said, it's disappointing to a lot of people, but I know they want us to be fiscally responsible. Right, right. Well, well, you know, good. It's it's an ongoing process, and uh, hopefully, you guys will make some good progress here in the next couple of months. Now, I understand you have some new directors. I am so delighted with the. Um, directors that we have seated. I don't know if you know, we had 16 applicants. Wow, no, I didn't know that, that's great. Uh, that's more uh, applicants than I've ever known and I've been sitting on boards for like six years now. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and we attracted some very uh, nice people that have some uh, good backgrounds and one of them was Sue Stevens. Um, I do not recall when we ever had a representative from Mutual 50. So everybody was delighted to um, have her, uh, not only because she represents Mutual 50, but also because of her background. So she, her background is operational auditing, energy, and construction. And then we have Gan Makapake, I want to pronounce that right, but he's a registered civil and geotechnical engineer. And Jim Hopkins, he's finance and strategic planning. And John Pearlstone, uh, I'm, I'm sure everybody is, is familiar with. He was on third for, I think, two, three years. And he has a background in business finance and strategic planning. And he is going to, he, he was nominated uh, yesterday to be treasurer. And he will be the chair of the strategic planning committee. Great. So... Um, I'm very excited about where we're going. That's great. I mean, you know, who who would have known that they all would have had such great experience for the for the job? So that's that's really nice to know. And then there is uh, someone that's for new legal counsel. Yes, we do. I mean, we're we're we've had a lot of changes, but I feel that the changes are good. You know, going forward, and so we're del delighted to have Lori Poole. And she is um, from the firm Adam Sterling. And as you know, Adam Sterling is California's leader in community association law. And she will be a tremendous help in developing and um, uh, modifying the necessary policies and procedures that produce positive results for our community. That's great, good, good news, that's wonderful. Now, of course, we, we all are very aware of the mask policy that we have here in Laguna Woods Village. And uh, I interviewed somebody just recently who said we're all doing a very good job with that. So what's the latest on that? Okay, well, as you know, that the first mask policy, mask <laughs> policy uh, GRF, uh, the board, you know, just could not approve. We, we basically wanted the mask, we were in support of the mask policy, but we wanted it to be, <clears throat> excuse me, just that, the mask policy. And, um, and so uh, it took some time, but there was another committee uh, formed and we all came to an agreement so that we have this new pass, a mask policy and, um, and that one starts, it's went into effect on July 28th. Right. So um, 
I'm I'm hearing interesting stories. Let me tell you, <laughs> with, yeah. with security trying to enforce it. Yeah, and, uh, it's a I, whole thing. But you know, it's the good thing about it is that people are understanding what the need is and why we need to do it. Um, but it looks as though so it's it needs to be worn in all public areas in the village, and then they they would like to not have gatherings of more than fifteen people, right? Right. right. Okay. Okay, good, and, and that's going, that went into effect July 28th, and that's gonna be for some time then, right? Well, the con, the actually policy is for four months. Oh, for four months, okay. And that's it, okay. and, and if, you know, if the numbers go down, you know, we can change that and right. make it clearer, hopefully. hopefully. Well, there, things are looking better as a whole of a nation, right. so, you know, and, and our numbers are still in the 30s. So I think everybody here is doing a really good job, regardless of how much we all don't like to wear them. But, you know, nobody likes to wear them, but we just have to wear them because we know it's a good thing to do. So thank you for all the work that you've been doing. And uh, it's, it's nice to see you. You look great. Thank you so much. And I just say, everyone be safe. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. Bye-bye. All right, bye. And we'll be right back after this.